Thanks for checking out this video. My name is Rob Snow White. Here is another low budget tying tutorial from the tire's perspective. It's going to show you what it looks like when you tie the fly. This is going to be my take on Russ Madden's Circus Peanut. It's going to take a little bit longer than most flies because there's two parts and lots of moving parts. I came across this fly last summer at Batkey Steelhead Lodge in Michigan. Mike Batkey owns Stealthcraft Boats. I was intrigued by this fly. He didn't know the name of it. it. Reminded me a lot of my articulated tampon fly, which is this without the slapping or rubber legs and tied on a single hook with no hook back here, just a um, little post or a, a pin. So I've been playing around with this fly for several months now, and this is what I've come up with. It's a little bit beefier. It's a little bit meatier, it's a little bigger, heavier, and it's got more flash to it. This one's fairly beaten up as we caught about a three and a half pound largemouth the other day on it. I tied in a variety of colors, but I'm going to do my crayfishy color one for you now. The materials to start with, I'm going to use not this color, but I'm going to use New Age Hollow Flash for the tail. I think I'm using some kind of orange crush color. The body is going to be crystal, Fle crystal flash chenille in hot orange. Rubber legs are going to be hot tipped silly legs, black and orange. I'm going to use slapping saddle hackles. I got these from one of the shops at uh, the Lancaster show. I was like seven or eight of these in a Ziploc bag for $10. I was awesome. And I'm going to use 210 denier black. And the hooks I'm going to use for the smaller hook, it's going to be this guy here, which is size 4, 70, 31. And the larger hook is going to be size 2, 70, 40. And then the eye is going to be a medium sized dumbbell. I don't want this too heavy. The way to fish this is with a vertical jigging action. And then to join them, just beetle on from the craft store across the street. All right, let's get this started. And I'm going to put my hook in my Regal Vice, and I'm going to start my thread, move back right here. I'm going to take my orange hollow flash. From this side, just grab a chunk. About right there. Not too concerned about the length on it. Gonna tie it in right about here. Get those extra ones in. And I'll just trim that to length. Now I'm gonna take a strand of the crystal flash. And there's one thing I do when I teach fly tying classes is I teach people to use the entire ball of chenille. And what I'm gonna do is just tie this in holding the ball in my left hand. This prevents me from wasting material. When I do it this way, I'm not cutting off a four inch strand and then using three inches and then I'm left with one afterward. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space right there for the rubber legs. And I'm gonna pull that material back to expose the front of the hook. Right about there. Cut. See, now I've got the whole ball and I didn't waste any material. I'm going to take two rubber legs, one on this side, one on the other. I will separate the tips of these legs when this is all said and done. It just keeps things a little bit neater for me. Tilt those back. Now, if you're having trouble with this stuff getting in the way, you can take just a piece of non-toxic wire and just fold it back. I forget who I got that trick from. I think it was from the Jumbo John tutorial I watched. Now the black schlappen or saddle hackle. And when I tie these, the colors are based on the rubber legs. So I try to match the feathers and material to the rubber legs. We're going to tie that in. This thing has got absolutely incredible motion 
in the water. I don't know too much about Russ Madden, but I'm glad he came up with this. I believe he's part of the Michigan fly tires crew that we always hear about. All right, I'm going to half hitch that with my finger. Cut my thread. All right, now the first half of that fly is done. You probably catch a fish just on that. I'm going to take my size 2, 3X long, put it in. I'm going to grab my bobbin. Again, notice I've never put my scissors down. Start my dumbbell eyes. I do them on the top rather than the bottom. I've never been a bottom dumbbell guy. Couple extra wraps around. I'm going to go back here. This is where I'm going to tie in my beetle on. You could use 30 pound monofilament. You could use backing. You can use Senyo intruder wire. All right, tie that in nice and tight because if a fish eats this fly and only gets hooked on the back portion, then you are only going to have this to keep it on. It'll loop back here. I'm not one of those guys that ties on a walleye bead. And the reason I'm using this is the thicker the material, it prevents this from jackknifing too much in the water. But as you can see, it's not doing the best job there. I'm going to wrap up to about here. I'm going to use the base of my scissors inside to cut that. Wrap back down. Now again, I'm going to take my ball of chenille. Find the end piece. And tie that in. Wrap all the way forward. And I'm just going to basically repeat this fly, but I'm gonna add a little bit of flashy bling at the end. I'm gonna go around the dumbbell eyes, make a nice little head on this dude. All right, right there. You have to be careful when you're doing this method of wrapping chenille because it will get caught in here on your right bobbin. All right, that's almost done. Let's add in our rubber legs. Right there. And I'm gonna have these about one third in the front and two thirds in the back. So a longer skirt in the back. Get these up and out of the way. Now I'm gonna take my second piece saddle hackle, pull these back, tie it in, snip that. All right, now I'm just gonna wrap and make a nice thick collar. Out of the way, rubber legs, you're in my way. All right, not too concerned if I'm wrapping over pieces and they're not laying down right. Just remember to fish this for largemouth Vertical jig. You lift the top of the rod, let the fly drop down. All right, I'm pretty much done with that. Now I'm going to take the longer edge of this and I'm going to find the nice straight pieces right in here. All right. I'm going to lay it down right here behind the dumbbell eyes three solid wraps, bring it forward, pinching it so it goes between the eyes, let it split over and around the nose or the eye of the hook. And there you have it. Now let's do a little bit of fun. I'm gonna take some Solar Easy. That is the newest UV cured lighting material on the market. These are the ones I have here, still in the package. I like them. All right, let's take out the thick. All right, so this is Solar Easy. And uh, this stuff's pretty awesome, I have to admit. It's very easy to use. And the reason I'm gonna do this around the head is because this thing is gonna be bouncing and knocking off rocks. So I just kind of want to stiffen and protect the head a little bit. Basically, you're putting a helmet 
on this fly. And look at that stuff, how just thick it is. Now I'm gonna use the Solar Easy lamp if I can find it. Okay, this is the Solar Easy lamp. I'm gonna hit it once for a couple seconds and stop. I'm just gonna slowly cook this fly's head. I'm not making any kind of round fancy head. All I'm doing is just making this head reinforced for the beating it's gonna take. Use smaller eyes if you wanna throw this on a six weight. And there it is, man. You can't get fishier, buggier looking than that. And like I said, the bottom of these, just trim off the tips. And you are freeing up all of those legs. So I want this thing to jig down and then up. Look at that motion, look at that fly. Chartreuse and black, purples and pinks. It's pretty awesome. Any questions, shoot me an email, rob at robsnowwhite.com and I will put a step-by-step -step of this eventually on my blog. It's a very cool looking fly. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this.